And this is Kyle from VMAX Parts at Yahoo.com. Mad Monkey Cycles. Somebody asked me to do a clutch video to VMAX. See, I had a few different old parts uh, specimens I could have tried it on. And I always have lots of uh, VMAXs in there I'm working on or, or buying and selling, whatever. But parts everywhere around here. But I choose to do this video on this perfectly good motor here that's going to be for sale. Uh, I already pulled the covers off of it, but you need a, a, a five millimeter Allen to get the outside bolts off of it. This had all clear covers on it, which will be for sale too. Uh, I just don't sell the motor with them. This also has a Barnett clutch, which I'm taking out and I'll be putting the standard clutch plate back in it. I'm just doing this just to show you all basically how to do a clutch. Uh, I don't ever make videos. Forgive me if I forget something. I usually work by myself and I just come out here and do what I need to do. I'm kind of impatient usually to be honest. But there goes. We're going to we're going to try this out here and see how it goes. Get my big fat hand out of there. Get my phone up here in the holder. All right. So there we are. Looking at the clutch. There's not too much of the clutches on these things. One of the simplest bikes ever. 10 millimeter bolts here. Pull all these bolts out. Pull that to the side, pull your pressure plate off there, lay it to the side and wherever. <clears throat> These are your friction discs. <clears throat> Service limit on these is 2.8 millimeter. So otherwise they should read 2.9 to, to 3.0. Point of. .1 at least. So you get your get your caliper measured out. This is 2.96 if you can see. So that plate is good. I knew these would be because he's basically a brand new Barnett clutch. I really prefer Yamaha clutch plates over Barnett. Barnett the Barnett pressure plate is fine, but I'm a drag racing experience. I've always found the Yamaha plates to hold up better than the Barnetts. So you take these plates out. Take these out one at a time. These will have a sharp side. And a smooth side if you feel it. Don't really matter which way they go. I use the boot to smooth side in. So the seller is doing a clutch on the VMAX. You just pull these out one by one. Come out two at a time or come any time. Get these all out of here. <clears throat> Easier sometimes to grab a little pick you can reach up in there with them and finish getting them out. Alright, so that's all of them. Get these out and get to the back here. I'm not, not sure if you can see it here, but I'm sorry about the up in here is a little retaining wire. So if you wanted to get rid of the half disc that's behind that that plate. Your retaining wire is usually right right here. There's a little groove, a little groove, it's kind of hard to see here. It's right here. So you would pull, pull out that last plate, and you pull out your half clutch, your half piece, and then you'll find a spacer. See this little spacer back there? You'd simply take that out. And just grab an old plate, grab a, a full Yamaha friction disc and it'll sit right in there. Then you can start 
stacking your stacking your steels back on top of it. But you do not have to. I recommend going to full plate on this. I think it's better off. And you don't have to do it. But it's just another recommendation. So, so after this, it's, it's really simple. Uh, your factory Yamaha plates will have an indexing mark. You'll see two little marks right here. And then if you look on your clutch basket, and I've got another clutch basket here to try and make it a little bit easier. You look around down in here, you'll see two dots. So you index, index your clutch plate to them two dots. Two dots to two dots, pretty simple, nothing to it. And also, when you have your steels out, right here, you want to make sure these are not warped. You go over here to your, your service manual, which I don't really use much anymore, but here's your, your table of contents here. And gives you your clutch plate thickness, service limit millimeter. So 0 0.008 would be your uh, warp limit on these steel plates. Let's see if we can move over here so I can see a second. I have a piece of marble here that I use. Sorry. I use this piece of marble. It's nice, nice and flat. I usually stack multiples on top of each other just to put a little weight on them so you hold them flat and put a little pressure on them and you take your feeler gauge and your 0 0.08 and go around them make sure you can't make sure it don't uh, stick underneath them you can kind of tell these will wobble if they're not so you always want to make sure them are flat also these will you take them out a lot of times they'll have burnt spots they'll be black purple whatever I put them in my bead blaster I bead blast them if you don't have a bead blaster you can get like some 80 grit sandpaper you want these nights and uh, roughed up and you want all that glaze gone off of them so make sure you get that glaze off them they're not warped and just reuse them you don't want to put them back in there all slick you'll all end up with a, a slipping clutch and we don't want that nobody likes to do a job twice all right let's back over here to the sorry about the back over here to the back to what we were doing all right since this has barnet clutch plates in it there's no indexing marks like I was talking about on others I seriously don't know how much difference it makes on others but I do it that way because it's we have always done is what the manual says so that's simple you just start stacking these back in here So that I didn't sandblast these plates or nothing since I'm just strictly doing this just to show y'all. Stack these back in here. Another time. All right, now that we have them back in, I'm gonna put our pressure plate back on. This pressure plate, you need to make dang sure you got it flush. A lot of people put these on and just go tighten them up and don't pay attention. This is not on there right, correctly right now. If you can see, there's a gap up in here. You don't want that gap. And also, don't pull your clutch while you have these apart. You can get them back together, but it just makes, makes it a pain. So, all you want to do is simply turn this. And I got it I got it right through the first time then. Um, so, now you can see this is flat here. So, that's right against her like it's supposed to be. So, I put your clutch spring back in. This is an outer ring in this one. 
that has been modified. This is extra, somebody made this to stack a double D clutch in. You do not have to have it. It's nice to have, but you don't have to have it. So if you don't have it, you want to do the double D mod, you just simply get an extra clutch spring and stack right on top of it. It's really not too much to it. And you, and you put your, your pressure, your bolts back in here. I'm not going to put this stuff again, so this motor for sale is extra part for me. I'm going to put the factory factory piece back in there. This clutch is pretty much brand new in this bike. So. Put all your bolts back in here. But these things are really simple. There's really not much to them. I think anybody can do it pretty quick. I'm taking my time here. Not in a big rush. Just I don't make videos and I'll probably miss something along the way. I usually get out here and just work. I'm kind of impatient to be honest. So. I'm just slowly tightening these back down. And I don't, I don't actually tighten them. These bolts are only 72 inch pounds. Do not get carried away. They will break easy. So once I get them just once I run the bolts down with my impact there, I'll come back with my my torque wrench. And honestly, I've done enough of them. By, um, enough of these that I don't usually I usually just do them by hand with a quarter inch ratchet, and they're and they're fine. I usually put some blue Loctite on these bolts. It's not a not a half to, but not, I like to put Loctite on them. So. Seventy-two inch pounds is not much, so no, no. So don't don't put the ooga dooga on them and uh, and break them. Then you'll be calling me or somebody else for a new uh, a new clutch basket. But really, that's all there is to it. Um, I hope this helps somebody some. Uh, if there's any questions, you can put them in the comments. Uh, need any parts? Looking for anything? You can always contact me at bmxparts at yahoo.com um, I'll try to do some more videos for y'all I've had some people ask me about a clutch slave cylinder a few other things like that um, like I said I'm usually out here by myself and I'm not really good at the video thing if you can tell this is one of my first first real videos I'm, I usually just show y'all what I'm fixing to do and show you a finished product if I show you anything but uh check out my YouTube page. I have a, a lot of, uh, mainly a lot of different, uh, you can pick up, pick bikes. There's a lot of different, uh, exhaust on V-Maxes in there. You can look through in there, different exhaust. I have some other videos, family stuff. My crazy basset hound's always on there. That's my baby. Uh, but I think this, uh, concludes this video. Thanks for watching. And like I said, hope it helped.